It's a broad overview of water source and treatment. Surface water sources, rivers and streams, we have lakes and man-made reservoirs, and you have the ocean. Surface water sources will have characteristics based on their location. Uh, for example, seawater is going to be high in TDS. Um, Brackish water is going to be higher in TDS than freshwater. Uh, rivers and streams, the problems with upstream pollution, with wastewater, agricultural drainage, industrial waste, uh, contaminated surface runoff will require more extensive treatment than ground well water. Uh, lakes and reservoirs, uh, you have the possibility of contamination and spread of disease such as typhoid, hepatitis, dysentery. Uh, subject to seasonal changes in water quality brought on by stratification. That's the layering of, layering of water in a lake by temperature. Uh, seasonal overturn, uh, algae blooms a result in taste and odor problems. Groundwater sources, uh, you got wells and springs. Groundwater is typically high in minerals like iron, manganese, chloride, sulfate, nitrates, uh, magnesium, calcium, hydrogen sulfide. Uh, groundwater is usually also considered hard water because of you know, these minerals. Uh, hard water is measured in calcium carbonate, milligrams per liter, um, that's CaCO3. Uh, soft water is going to be 0 to 60, moderately hard 61 to 120, hard water is 121 to 180, and very hard is over 180. Infiltration is when groundwater levels are low, uh, water may enter the shallower surface aquifer from streams and rivers and lakes, and this would make your groundwater under the direct influence, or UDI. Some of the physical factors that affect the quality of water, uh, color, turbidity, temperature, taste, and odor. Color is a secondary MCL, uh, 15 color units. Uh, it can be from dissolved organic matter, decaying vegetation, certain inorganic matter, excessive algae blooms. Uh, it can be an aesthetic or a potential health problem. Turbidity, uh, the primary MCL for turbidity is 5 MTU caused by the presence of suspended and colloidal material. It's objectable for aesthetic reasons. It can harbor bacteria and exert a high chlorine demand. Uh, good quality finished water may have turbidity levels of 0.05 to 0.3 units. Temperature. Most desirable drinking waters are consistently cool, uh, most pleasing from 10 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius or 50 to 60 degrees. Fahrenheit, water over 30 degrees Celsius, A6 Fahrenheit is unacceptable. Uh, the temperature of groundwater varies with the depth of the aquifer. Uh, taste, uh, dissolved mineral characteristics and algae growth can cause taste problems. Um, odor is a secondary MCL of 3 ton. That can be from algae growth and groundwater is containing hydrogen sulfide, which spark smells. Uh, biological factors, water for domestic use must be free from disease-causing organisms, uh, bacteria, spores, viruses. Uh, coliform group bacteria normally inhabit the intestinal tract of man, also birds and mammals, and the soil. Uh, the maximum contaminant level MCL for coliforms uh, must be absent in at least 95% of samples. This allows only 5% of monthly samples to have a back T positive, and that will be dependent on the population. And here's some of uh, the treatment methods. Uh, quality problems for groundwater, sulfide odors. Um, like I said, treat sulfide odors, it's rot the rotten egg smell with aeration. Uh, you can oxidize it with chlorination and degasification. So like I said, an aerator. Uh, iron or magnesium, uh, like your red water, do sequestration with polyphosphates most often is used, uh, special ion exchange, oxidation and filtration, um, aeration, effective when the pH is between 7 and 9, uh, chlorination, but it can cause the formation of TTHM. You got uh, excessive hardness, calcium magnesium. 
uh, ion exchange softening, or lime and soda softening. Uh, your coliforms and microbial contamination, you disinfect. Surface water quality problems, uh, dissolved minerals, high TDS, ion exchange, reverse osmosis. Uh, reverse, reverse osmosis is capable of removing chloride, sodium, calcium, magnesium, good for brackish water sources and direct seawater sources. Uh, turbidity in color, coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, and filtration. Uh, odors, organic materials, uh, clarification, uh, oxidation, special oxidation, uh, granular powder activated carbon. Coliform and microbial contamination, like I said, you disinfect with chlorination. Uh, sometimes people use ozone. Uh, also, coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection. So, <clears throat> TTHM, total trihalomethanes. Uh, so, you don't want to pre chlorinate, disinfect with ozone, chlorine dioxide, or chloramine. Uh, remove THM precursors. Uh, remove the THMs after they are, have formed. Again, just an overview of the water quality problems and sources treatment methods uh, for groundwater, coliforms, microbial contamination, disinfection, chlorine, uh, sulfide odors, uh, the rotten egg, aeration, oxidation, chlorination, desulfuration, sulfur dioxide, excessive hardness, calcium and magnesium, ion exchange softening, lime and soda softening. Iron and manganese, sequestration, removal by special ion exchange, permanganate and green sand, oxidation by aeration, oxidation with chlorine, oxidation with permanganate, uh, filtration must follow oxidation, dissolved minerals, high total dissolved solids, ion exchange, reverse osmosis, uh, corrosivity, low pH, pH adjustment with chemicals, carbon dioxide stripping by aeration, uh, corrosion inhibitor addition, zinc phosphate silicate. Uh, some preventative treatment, fluoridation, you add fluoride. Uh, sand, sand separators. Nitrate, anion exchange, re reverse osmosis. Um, water quality problems and treatment methods, surface water. Coliforms microbial contamination, uh, disinfection with chlorination, disinfection with other oxidants, ozone, chlorine dioxide, chlorination, uh, coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, filtration, and disinfection. Uh, turbidity, uh, again, coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, and filtration. You're going to hear that one a lot. Odors, organic material, clarification. Clarifiers, coagulation, flocculation, sedimentation, filtration. Um, oxidating, so chlorination and permangate, uh, special oxidation, chlorine dioxide, adsorption, granular activated carbon, uh, iron and manganese, sequestration with polyphosphates, removal by special ion exchange, permanganate and green sand. Oxidation by aeration, oxidation with chlorine, uh, oxidation with permangate. Again, filtration must follow oxidation. Excessive hardness, calcium and magnesium. Ion exchange softening, lime and soda softening. Uh, dissolved minerals, high TDS, uh, ion exchange, reverse osmosis. Corrosivity, low pH, pH, ad pH adjustment with chemicals, uh, corrosion inhibitor addition, zinc phosphate and silicate. Again, pre preventative treatment, you know, fluoridation, you add fluoride to the water, and then again, your trihalomethanes, THMs, you know, do not pre-chlorinate, disinfect with ozone, chlorine dioxide, or chlorination, remove THM precursors, remove THMs after they are formed. Again, your treatment methods for groundwater and surface water tend to be the same. You know, it's, again, it depends on the characteristics of the water. Again, conventional water treatment, 
you know, it's a lot of places, you know, coagulation, using a coagulant chemical that causes particles to clump, so they can flocculate, which is the gathering of the fine particles into flocks by gentle mixing, sedimentation, the settling of those particles, filtration, removing the remaining particles, again, disinfection, because the purpose of a water treatment plant is to produce safe and pleasant drinking water that meets Safe Water Drinking Act requirements. Water should be free of disease-causing organisms and toxic substances and should not have disagreeable taste, odor, or appearance. So this is just a brief overview of sources and treatments.